Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Frederic Constant with the new High Life. So this is kind of a new model DNA that we've seen from the brand as of late and excited to take a closer look. So in this video, and if you're not familiar with this channel, this is where we cover watches available for purchase on our website at teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands. So in this video, we'll do a deep dive coverage of this piece, go over the things to consider maybe before you make an actual purchase on this watch. Uh, so go over all those details. If you want any additional information though, link in the description to the product page where you can get some more uh, information info, background around this piece, and also can book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well before purchasing. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. So back in 1999, Frederic Constant released the first ever High Life model, and the design focus for the collection was the implementation of an integrated strap to the case of the watch. In 2020, FC has reintroduced the High Life collection with three different pieces, the High Life Perpetual Calendar, the High Life Heartbeat, and then the piece that we're gonna be looking at today, the traditional High Life Automatic Cost Certified model. Since the release of the original High Life collection, Frederic Constant has gone on to just really establish itself as one of the more forward-looking brands in the world of watchmaking, which is pretty much evidenced by their recent release of their new oscillator uh, that is pretty impressive. But a decade ago, when they were still kind of an up-and-coming independent brand, FC set out to do what was still a fairly novel idea, and that was to produce their own in-house movements. Today, in-house language around movements has completely changed and just the perception of it. But back in 2008, 2009, 2010, the landscape was quite different. But now FC in a modern context has really allowed themselves to develop a reputation around producing good value for money watches, watches that I think take elements of higher end timepieces and put them in a package that is still well made and well just constructed while still doing it at a price that I would say more people could make it attainable. Now, while Frederic Constant is no longer an independent brand, they're now owned by the Citizen Watch Group, the company still continues to create and produce really high quality watches in this very competitive price category. And this High Life Automatic is a model that that combines good looks, a nice movement, and smart details throughout. So let's take a closer look at this watch. So taking a look at the High Life Automatic on the wrist, we have a cushion-shaped case that measures at 41 millimeters in diameter while just sitting 11 millimeters thick. And the case length from the top to the bottom is reasonable 45 millimeters when measuring lug to lug. Now this isn't as straightforward as it seems because when you do measure the extended center link at that farthest point that meets the case, that is going to measure at 54 millimeters. Now don't get scared. This is not gonna wear like a 54 millimeter lug to lug watch. If you're familiar with any integrated style bracelet, you'll know that this is a common attribute of these types of watches. So just kind of keep in mind that this is gonna probably wear closer to that of a 40 to 41 millimeter case. So probably imagine a lug to lug distance of around 48 millimeters for the actuals. But in terms of the wear, very good on the wrist for the case size. The combination of finishing is fairly straightforward along this cushion case where you'll find a polished finishing along the sides and a soft brush finish on top of the case. A thin fixed bezel features a polished finish as does the push-pull crown which is situated at the three o'clock position. The crown operates in typical fashion, manual winding at that first position when flush to the case. Extending the crown to the second position, you can change the date at the three o'clock. And at the farthest pulled out point, you then can adjust the time while stopping the second hand in the process, so hacking seconds here. Sliding down to the case to the bracelet, we find it integrated into the case with a large polished center link and then thinner brush H links that all taper from about 25.5 millimeters at that fixed end to 18 millimeters halfway down to the bracelet where it remains throughout all the sizing and the links of which there are plenty to that butterfly clasp. Now unlocking the bracelet is a double button system. When the buckle is fully expanded, you will find some nice pearlized treatment to the interior surfaces while the rest of the clasp is finished with more high polish. Now the inside of the bracelet is entirely brush finish with soft surfaces everywhere, optimizing wearability. The links are relatively small, so sizing it down to a perfect fit shouldn't be an issue. There are no points of micro adjustment, so that is one downside of this type of configuration with the clasp. And then also securing the links in place are push pins. The use of push pins as well as the lack of micro adjustment could be some downsides of this bracelet. But in terms of the actual fit and finish on the wrist, it feels very premium, right in line with that of something you would see from this $2,000 price range. I think the finishing throughout this watch looks very, very good and feels very, very good. Quick release pins are found on the underside of the end links, which allows you to quickly swap out the bracelet for additional rubber strap that comes with the watch as well. When swapping out the bracelet for the rubber strap, the fit on the wrist, once again, is excellent. The blue rubber 
rubber strap has a top side texture that feels just a bit like a nylon or sailcloth and has some stitching along the sides and matching blue thread. Securing the rubber strap to the wrist is a pin buckle with the FC logo coat of arms shield etched on top. Now one nice design element to the rubber strap is the integrated polished center link where the strap attaches to the case. Again, the ability to quickly and easily change out the straps is a design and engineering feature exclusive to the highlight collection. And it's really a nice thing to have on any watch, particularly those with the integrated bracelets or straps as you kind of are married to these types of configurations when you're going this route. So transitioning over to the dial, we have a slightly convex double AR coated sapphire crystal revealing the matte navy blue dial beneath. A large globe motif at the center of the dial provides both texture and character and probably the main thing that's going to pull in the eyes from the get-go. The hour markers are applied high polished indexes with white luminous treatment and are complemented nicely by the polished steel pencil hands which also contain the same white luminous material within. Printing for the dial is done in white lettering for both the FC logo under the 12 o'clock index, as well as on the three lines above the six o'clock marker, which references the movement inside. Along the outside edge of the dial, there's a tightly packed minute track, again printed in the same white lettering. Finally, a frame date window at three o'clock reveals a white date window and adds a bit more depth and nice attention to detail. But simply put, when looking at the dial of this one, it is rather simple. And I, the other thing I like about this, this design when we're looking at the case, as well as the bracelet, it certainly has inspiration that it's drawing from, but is not so much on the nose. This is in its own way, I think a great interpretation of an integrated steel sports type of watch at a price range that is much more palatable for the every type of person. Now flipping this watch over, we have view of an exhibition case back providing view of that Sleeta SW200 movement, getting some modifications as well with that golden rotor to add a little bit more flair. But the point here that is the most important is that this is a COSC certified movement as well. Now when looking at the SW200 as a movement, this really is kind of that standard movement along with the ETA 2824 as being an automatic standard in the world of Swiss watchmaking. And in terms of reliability, serviceability, it is going to simply be hard to beat. Now, when it comes to peace of mind on top of the already good reputation of the Sleeta SW200 is that this one is going to also be COSC certified. Now, to get that certification, FC is sending in these movements to be certified, paying a little bit of money in the process to get that certification as well. So they're not messing around in the actual performance that you're gonna be getting out of this. Just You should be rest assured that you're going to, of course, get good accuracy and also getting another set of eyes that are gonna take a look at this movement and test it at a variety of different positions and a variety of different circumstances. Now, in terms of general accuracy for COSC, minus four to plus six seconds a day, you're also getting a pretty straightforward movement when it comes to serviceability, regulation, down the road as well. So giving you a lot of peace of mind and the fact that they're gonna be sending these in for actual certification, I think just gives further, uh, I would say a note to the fact that they're not trying to cut any corners in regards to this movement. In terms of what you're getting from operation, pretty straightforward here, 28,800 vibrations per hour for Hertz, features hacking and hand winding. So hacking stop in the second hand when you pull out the crown to the farthest position and has a power reserve of 38 hours. All right, so now to unpack and look at this FC high life and just some final thoughts in closing. Now FC is a brand that's kind of been going through a period of change in a lot of ways now shifting from the Citizen Watch Group and their ownership. And I think in a lot of cases, it's allowed the brand to start to rethink their philosophy in some ways while continuing to do what got them to this point. And one of those watches that I think is emblematic of this transition is the high life. It's a new type of approach from a modern perspective for the brand. And I'm somebody who I see so often people kind of lusting after these high horology sports watches. And the, the honest reality is you can't get them. And I am never somebody that wants to make a compromise when you're getting into this world of watches. I think you should go for the thing you truly want. But there's just an unfortunate reality, both on price as well as actual availability, that prevents people from making these watches happen. And when you have that type of scenario, it opens up the door for brands like an FC to come in and create their own designs with their own take on this type of format. And the High Life, unlike other watches, like I mentioned earlier on, is not 
not a watch that is so on the nose of being a direct parallel to other brands from a high horology perspective. This watch is not truly pulling from all from one place and also has some standalone features that make it its own. And I think FC did a nice job navigating this path in the right manner, pulling where they needed to while staying true to what they need to do to make this a differentiating watch in the price range. In terms of where this one is sitting, there's a lot of things to like about this watch. $2,000 COSC certified movement, very good bracelet, good finishing on that case, and also getting a dialed format that is pretty simple. Uh, the wearability is going to be, say, true to that 41 millimeters, 4041 in terms of wearability, so keep that in mind. Integrated bracelets are going to create some challenges because if you're not liking the bracelet, then you are kind of stuck there. You don't have the strap options at your disposal, but be rest assured here that you are getting a good bracelet. I'd say the one significant thing to point out from a downside is the 50 meters of water resistance, 100 meters I think would allow this one to really be a leader in this $2,000 price range while also navigating as a, I would say more original design than some others in the category going after this integrated style bracelet. But overall, I think FC did a fantastic job with the release of the High Life. It's so different than the other watches that they're producing that tend to be a bit more dressy. I think they see the writing on the wall and seeing a lot of things going a little bit more casual and sporty. And they just did a great job navigating. They're around $2,000 for a watch that does a lot of the things that people look for when talking about a Steel Spores integrated style bracelet and also getting a design that isn't, again, so much in comparison to some of those high horology sports watches and has a bit of its own take on this type of interpretation. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Also, if you're in the market for any watch covered on this channel, we are a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands. All the watches covered on this channel, we are a seller of, so definitely check that out, teddyballstar.com. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer price match, so if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer. Fill out the form on the website and we'll be in touch with you. And then also nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content we're creating here as well as on our main channel, of course. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.